today, but God will do what he wants to do. Isaiah chapter 43. Choristers, God bless you. Celebrate the best choir in the whole world. Celebrate them. Is that all you can do for your choir? God bless you. Isaiah 43. 18 and 19. Isaiah 43. Verse 18 and 19. A new dawn. Remember ye not the former things. Neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Let me announce to ten persons whose amen will be the loudest. This season, God will do a new thing in your life. It doesn't matter how ugly the past may have been. I speak as God's oracle in the name that is above every other name. A new chapter of your life is beginning to unfold. The louder your amen, receive it in the name of Jesus. A new dawn. I will just do some definitions this evening. When you say something is new, what do you mean? I have about three definitions. I know you, I mean, we are so conversant with new things. So when you say it's new, uh, some will tell you it's tear rubber, okay? It's brand new, but look at it this way. New could mean something that haven't been used before. So, it is, you know, coming out from the factory, from the source. It hasn't been used. It's new. Number two, you can define new to mean something that is recently found. Something that is just found recently. Recently found. It might be there but nobody discovered it. Nobody found it. And then suddenly, it is found. You can say it is new. Number three, you can define new to mean something recently created or recently formed. Let me talk about something that is recently found because that resonates more with me. It means that it is possible that something has been in existence for some time. But the existence of that thing never counted. In other words, that thing may be there, but it is just making up the numbers. It happens with individuals, it happens with families. You find yourself in an environment, nobody even knows that you exist. But suddenly something happens, and then they realize that someone like this was here or has been here. I'm praying for someone hearing the sound of my voice. This season, God will find you. I give you a very clear illustration from the Bible so you understand this definition. A man called Abraham 
had lived for 75 years before God found him. 75 years of merely occupying space. 75 years of no impact. 75 years of no color. His life was nothing to talk about. In Genesis chapter 12 from verse 1 to 4. Genesis 12, 1 to 4. He says, Now the Lord had said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country, from thy kindred, from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that cursed thee, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Look at verse 4. So Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken unto him, and Lot went with him. And Abraham was 75 years old when he departed Haran. 75 years of no impact. If it took 75 years for God to discover or to find Abraham and relocate him to his place in destiny, then it is not too late for someone hearing the sound of my voice to start afresh. Let me speak over your life in the name that is above every other name. My God will relocate you this season in the name of Jesus. You know the story of a young man called Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth was languishing in a land called Lodeba. He was completely written off. In fact, he had given up on himself. Like some people do today. You would classify him as someone who was already finished. He had given up hope. Never thinking that he will ever make it again in life. In 1 Samuel chapter 9 from verse 1 to 4. 1 Samuel chapter 9, 1 to 4. All of a sudden from nowhere. God remembered him and he spoke through the mouth of his son, his servant David. Is there anyone left in the house of Saul that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? And there was of the house of Ziba a servant whose name was house of Saul a servant whose name was Ziba. And when they had called him unto David, the king said unto him, Art thou Ziba? And he said, Thy servant is he. And the king said, Is there not yet any of the house of Saul that I may show kindness of God unto him? And Ziba said unto the king, Jonathan had yet a son, which is lame on his feet. And the king said unto him, Where is he? And Ziba said unto the king, Behold, he is in the house of Machi, the son of Amiel in Lodeba, crippled, finished, written off, waiting for the day he will die. But something changed. Something is going to change in the life of someone here. The louder your amen, you are moving into your new dawn. In the name of Jesus. So I'd like you to understand that someone can be existing until he's found. A third example is David. You know his story. David was, you know, they posted him. That was his beat, the bush. Stay there. Take care of the cattle. Deal with all the problems. The lions, the bears, that's your, prop, that's your business. If they kill you in the process, so be it. And a day came when God visited the house of Jesse. He sent Samuel. Go and anoint a king for me. Samuel got to the house. Jesse lined up all of his sons from the beginning to the, I mean, the seven that he had. And when they brought all of them out, Samuel, from the first, the senior, until he got to the seventh, Samuel said, God has not chosen any of this. And in 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 10 to 12, read it in NLT, 1 Samuel 16, 10 to 12. Jesse made, in the same way, all seven of Jesse's sons were presented to Samuel. But Samuel said to Jesse, the Lord has not chosen any of this. 
Then Samuel asked, are these all the sons you have? They're still the youngest, Jesse replied. But he's out in the fields watching the sheep and goats. Send for him at once, Samuel said. We will not sit down to eat until he arrives. Let me pray for someone here. Until your new dawn comes. God will ensure that men and women will not rest. Anyone he will use to cause your new dawn to come forth. They will not rest until your new dawn is established. The louder your amen receive it in the name of Jesus. He said, I have found David my servant. With my holy oil have I anointed him. With whom my hand shall be established. My arm also shall strengthen him. Psalm 89, 20 and 21. I have found David my servant. Let me pray for someone here. This day, this day, today, not tomorrow, God will cause you to be found. Where you have been forgotten, you will be remembered. Receive it in the name of Jesus. So it doesn't matter where you are coming from. You may have been relegated to the backside of life. But your day of appearance, your day of a new dawn has come. And so shall it be. In the name of Jesus. So that's speaking to something new. Then what about dawn? How do we define dawn? I just have two definitions for dawn. Now let's explain them. Dawn is D-A-W-N. Dawn. Definition number one. Dawn could mean the beginning of a phenomenon. The beginning of a phenomenon. Permit me to use this illustration. Because I used to be a footballer. I played football until I stopped playing football because my father didn't want me to continue playing football. He wanted me to study and uh, take my studies seriously. And so, I love football, uh, which is why recently, you know, we had to um, sponsor the Nigerian Football Federation because I believe so much. It's something that I love. Now, those of you who are football lovers, you'll remember sometime in August 2003, A young boy showed up. There was a football match, a Premier League match, between Bolton Wanderers and Manchester United. And it was at Old Trafford. Now, 30 minutes to the end of the match, they introduced a young boy. His name is Ronaldo. And I saw this, I watched that match very well. Immediately, the young man came in. He was dribbling everybody. He took the ball, he will go to the left, he will dribble, you know, he will use all, all the skills. People were just laughing, they were enjoying themselves. But something happened on that day. A young man was being announced to his world. Because from that day, his career took a new turn. Today, you all know who Ronaldo is. That day was the day he had his dawn. And then backtrack a little. Don't mind me, I love football. October 2002. Arsenal fans will not like this. They had played, Arsenal had played 30 league matches, undefeated. And then on this day, they were visiting Goodison Park. 
they had a match against Everton. And all of a sudden, Everton introduced one teenager. His name is Wayne Rooney. The last minute of the match, Wayne Rooney struck a 30-yard stunner that shattered the records of Arsenal. They lost the match. The young boy was introduced to his world. From that day, everybody wanted him on his side. Hear me tonight. Nobody may have known you. But by the reason of what God is doing this season, you are coming out from obscurity to limelight. The louder your amen, receive it in the name of Jesus. The time for you to shine has come. I don't know who the Lord is talking about. My time to shine has come. Can you say it as if you mean it? Can you say it one more time? So shall it be. In the name of Jesus. Definition number two. The first is the beginning of a phenomenon. Number two. Dawn could also mean the first light of day. When you say the break of day, they don't break. I'm sure you understand that. Let me speak it. Let me, you know, um, I'm not very good at, you know, preaching or speaking in pidgin English. But the Holy Spirit is putting something in my mouth this evening. <laughs> I say your day don't break. You know, where you day, nobody know you. But very soon, eh? It gonna be like say you don't hammer. It gonna be like say you don't blow. I don't know who God they talk about. Where the person they? Where are they? Can I hear you say my day don't break? Talk I'm like say you mean I my day don't break. Knock your hand for your chest. Knock up. Say my day don't break. If you catch and well, may you say amen three times. Amen. You remember one boy that they called Joseph? Joseph not do anything, the country and put for prison. In each prison, they come for get them. Then one day can't come. God can't put trouble for Pharaoh's head. Pharaoh sleep, he can't begin dream. He wake up, he don't understand the dream. He call him magicians, they're not fit to interpret them. All of a sudden, one of his servants can't remember, say one slave day for inside prison. Where shall be interpret dream? Pharaoh can't say, where, where are they? They say they prison. He can't send them. 
It's somebody that go bring her come out. As Joseph appeared, Pharaoh tell him the dream. Joseph said, which can this thing not be a problem now? As he reasoned the thing finish, he gave him the answer. Pharaoh look, Joseph. He said, who be this kind picking? Before you say Jack, Pharaoh Nakam, Prime Minister. He took the ring with the finger, he removed and put for the, Joseph. And he changed in location, he cut him from prison, put him for Asso Rock. The cloth when he wear them, remove them, then wear them, king cloth. They arrange emergency marriage for them. Joseph not even pay bride price. He not attend counseling class. In day don't break. Make I announce to hundred persons, whether your enemy like him or not, your day don't break. Say in the name of Jesus, my day don't break. Talk him three times. Christians, come, come. Make we sing one song. Amen. This is a very simple song. All of us, Abiyam. I have a very big God. He's always by my side. A very big God. By my side. By my side. I have a very big God. You go sing them like this. Amen. My day don't break. Better don't they come. Who want anyone want? <laughs> Who want try stop me? God go stop them. He go fail. Amen. <laughs> make I sing and make you understand. My day don't break. Better don't they come who won't try stop me? God go stop them, he go fail. Amen. Make I sing up again. Ha. My day don't break. Better don't they come who won't try stop me? God go stop them. Are we ready? We'll sing it together. I want to go. My day don't they go. Now listen, in case they, they, they want they stubborn like Pharaoh, when after God don't tell Pharaoh, leave these people, make them go. Pharaoh say, not Greek, pursue them, reach Red Sea. You go change the song. My day don't break up. Better don't they come. Who won't try stop me. God go kill them, he go die. Are you ready? My day don't break. Better than they come. Who won't try to stop me? God will kill him, he go die. Let's sing that 
that one to God. I want to go. My day don't break. Turn that to prayers. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Every force that will hinder my new dawn. Break their powers today. Are you praying or you are playing? Every force that will hinder my new dawn. If they fail to repent, my God will bring them down. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. God bless you. Recover your seats. You will sing that song at some point. <laughs> your day don't break. <laughs> Who won't try to stop you? Uh, either God go stop him or God go kill him. Now, quickly, because uh, my time is almost up. Choristers, you can, you can take your seat briefly now. Experiencing a new dawn does not come cheap. It doesn't come cheap at all. And I've just mentioned some things that you need to do. Because tomorrow I'll be giving you 22 dimensions of a new dawn. Experiencing a new dawn does not come cheap. But there are three very important things you must do to enter into your new dawn. Number one, and very, very important, you must change your mindset. What did I say? You must change your mindset. Remember ye not the former things. Neither consider the things of old. Behold. I'm doing a new thing. The reason why some persons find it difficult to experience a new dawn. Is that, you know, they have a negative mindset. About experiencing a change. In Judges chapter 6, 14 to 15, I'm giving you an example. Judges 6, 14 to 15, a young man, a young man called Gideon, you know, God was reaching out to him to use him for a major assignment. And the Lord turned to him and said, go with the strength you have and rescue Israel from the mid. Give it to me in King James Version. He captures it better. And the Lord looked upon him and said, go in this thy might that thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have not I sent thee? And he said unto him, O oh my Lord, wherewith shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is poor in Manasseh and I'm the least in my father's house. I've heard people say that in their families, people don't do well. So when you're talking about a new dawn, they tell you, look, it can't happen. May I humble you? Even if they don't do well in your family, you will become the jinx breaker. <laughs> the jeans. Break it. I 
I've told you before. I came from a very humble home. And I see my parents struggling just to send us to pay school fees. And send, I, I, every day I keep saying to myself, I will not suffer what my parents suffered. I can't go through this experience. And you know, while we were going through it, I kept telling myself, this is not what I will pass through. You must change your mindset. Change your mindset. I'm too old to get married. Who said so? Who said so? So the pastor will just be talking your new dawn. It's not for me. <laughs> Whether you like it or not, I will force you into your new dawn. <laughs> this church we have seen people in their 50s in their 60s getting married yours won't be an exception I'm too old to have a child who said so ask Sarah grandma Sarah Genesis 18 9 to 14 NLT. Hear what happened there. New living transition. He said, where is Sarah, your wife? The angels were living after they have been entertained. The visitors asked, she's inside the tent, Abraham replied. Then one of them said, I will return to you about this time next year, and your wife, Sarah, will have a son. Sarah was listening to this conversation from the tent. Abraham and Sarah were both very old by this time, and Sarah was long past the age of having children. So she laughed silently to herself and said, how could a worn-out woman like me enjoy such pleasure, especially when my master, my husband, is also so old? Then the Lord said to Abraham, why did Sarah laugh? Why did she say, can an old woman like me have a baby? Is anything too hard for the Lord? I will return about this time next year and Sarah will have a son. <laughs> Hear me? Listen. If there's something you must do after tonight, take out the word impossible from your dictionary. Am I talking to someone here? For with God, nothing shall be impossible. So take it out. Take it out. I've done this several years ago. If you tell me something is impossible, you will just arouse my curiosity. Because I want to prove to you that it is possible. Change your mindset. You can still make it in life. It doesn't matter how you have failed in the past. I've said it again and again, failure is not final. Proverbs 24 verse 16 says something. Proverbs 24 and verse 16. It says, the godly may trip how many times? Seven times. The King James Version says, you know, the righteous may fail or fall at seven times. But what? He rises up again. You failed before and so what? Try again. You will succeed. Let me pray for someone here. The last time you failed will be the last failure you ever had. The louder your amen, receive it in the name of Jesus. You know, we are so quick to talking about uh, Sarah, you know, having a baby at 90. Have you checked out in the New Testament, this woman called Elizabeth? Read Luke chapter 1, verse 5 to 20. We won't have time to read it. Elizabeth had John the Baptist at the age of 88. So if you are still doubting what God can do, you better think twice. Let me pray for someone hearing the sound of my voice. 
You know, some of you get into depression because you just come to a point of hopelessness and you think your case, you know, your chapter is closed. I have good news for you. It's your season of a new dawn. In Job chapter 14, 7 to 9, NLT, Job 14, 7 to 9, it says, For there is hope for a tree, NLT. Even a tree has more hope. If it is cut down, it will sprout again and grow new branches. Though its roots have grown old in the earth and its stump decays, hear this, at the scent of water, it will bud and sprout again like a new seedling. There are 100 persons hearing the sound of my voice. You will sprout up again. That amen is weak. I say you will bounce back again. In the name of Jesus. So you need to enter into that realm of understanding. That you've got to change your mindset to experience a new door. Number two, very important. You must fight for your new door. Somebody say fight. fight. Say it as if you mean it. Fight. Say it one more time. Fight. I can't hear you at the gallery. Say fight. fight. Genesis chapter 32. See this account. From verse 22 to 30. I'll read very fast. It says, During the night, Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two servant wives, and his eleven sons, and crossed the Jabbok River with them. After taking them to the other side, he sent over all his possessions. This left Jacob all alone in the camp. And a man came and wrestled with him until the dawn began to what? When the man saw that he would not win the match, he touched Jacob's hip and rent it out of its socket. Then the man said, let me go for the dawn is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. What is your name? The man asked. He replied, Jacob. Your name will no longer be Jacob. The man told him, from now on you will be called Israel because you have fought with God and with men and have won. Please tell me your name, Jacob said. Why do you want to know my name? The man replied. Then he blessed Jacob there. Jacob named the place Peniel, which means face of God. For he said, I have seen God's face to face. Yet my life has been spared. Fight! For your new dawn. This is one fight nobody will fight for you. I'm telling you the truth. If you notice from verse 32 to 34, Jacob sent the wives, sent the, the, the servants, the sons away. He was alone. He wrestled with the angel until daybreak. Listen. No man will fight for another man for his day to break. I'm telling you the truth. This is your fight. You must fight for your new dawn. In 1 Samuel chapter 17, you know the story. David and Goliath. David has been anointed in chapter 16. I shared with you. And then the father gave him food to take to his brothers in the battlefield. He got there and discovered that, look, there is someone who was already terrorizing the entire people. And if this man succeeds, David's new dawn would have come to naught. Because he was already anointed king. Now here is a man terrorizing the whole Israel. If he wins, it means that David will never become the king of Israel. He dropped the food. He kept everything aside. He said, if all of you soldiers who are well armed cannot fight this man, I will fight him. Because my new dawn is at stake. And he removed everything. Faced the man. And he said to him, look, you come against me. You, am I a dog? He said, yes. You are an uncircumcised dog. You come against me with spares. I come against you in the name of the Lord God of hosts, the God of Israel. This day, the Lord will give you to my hands. You can't sit here and see the enemy. You see, some of us can be so lukewarm. 
The enemy is terrorizing your family, terrorizing your home, and you are just watching. You are watching. You have daughters, all of them are of marriageable age. No one is getting married, and you are watching. Fight for your new dawn. When we ask people to pray, you see them struggling to pray. Why? Look, listen. The Bible says, pray without ceasing. Matthew 11, verse 12. It says, from the days of John the Baptist up till now, the kingdom of God suffered violence. And the violence taketh it by force. Tell your neighbor, fight for your new dawn. Say it as if you mean it. Say it one more time. In the place of prayer, in the place of fasting. In the place of waiting on the Lord. I was sharing with my children this morning when we were having a, a you know, morning devotion. I told them, I said, I was already fasting, doing dry fasting at the age of 14. 14. You know, not the kind of dry fast you people do now. When you are fasting, they say it's, uh, you are doing marathon. 6 p.m., you will take juice, you will take fruit, you will do, and then you continue. During our time, you will do marathon. If it's dry, you won't drink water. You won't even paste. If you want to clean your teeth, you use chewing stick. I am telling you what I did. I'm telling you. At the age of 14. What was I praying for? I don't want what stopped my parents to stop me. And today you see the result. So when you see this man now, you'll be saying, ah, I wish I'm this man. He didn't start to do. Fight for your new dog. Because whether the devil likes it or not, your day must break. I say your day must break. In the name of Jesus. The last one I will give you before we pray, because we are going to pray tonight. We are going to pray tonight. The third and final thing you need to do to experience, to enter into your new dawn. Take, listen to this. All old bad habits must go. Is someone hearing me? Uh, those of you at the extension, can you hear me? All old bad habits must do what? Must go. Sons of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 15, King James Version. Sons of Solomon. It says, take us the foxes. The little foxes that spoil the vines. If your day must break, old bad habits must go. Little foxes. Little alcohol. Once in a while. You mixed out with coke. Go and read Proverbs chapter 20 verse 1. Little fornication. 1 Corinthians 6, 18 says, flee fornication. Little adultery. A married man here, married woman, you, have concub you, have, you are keeping all manner of relationships. Little lies. Revelations 21 verse 8, all liars will go to hell. 
Little pride, little arrogance. James 4 verse 6, God resists the proud. Little anger. Ecclesiastes 7 9 says, anger lies in the bosom of fools. Little sins. You can't experience the kind of new dawn that we are talking about today. If these old habits don't go. See, you have to be very deliberate tonight. It's not a night for pretending, a night for, you know, if you manage, you think you are managing, you are managing God, you will manage yourself out. I'm telling you the truth. It doesn't matter for how long you have been in church. If you must experience a new dawn, you must be ready to put aside every old bad habit that will hinder you from entering into this realm. Bow down your heads, everyone. You are here tonight. You know you are struggling with some habits that could hinder you from entering into your new dawn. Wherever you are, lift up your hand above your head. I want to pray with you from here. You know it. You are struggling. You are struggling. You are struggling. But here is your new dawn staring at you. You cannot enter into it. Except you put aside all of these things. Lift up your right hand. Wherever you are. Upstairs, downstairs. God bless you. I can see those hands up. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lift them up very well unto the Lord. Now, if your hand is lifted up, if you don't mind, please come before the altar quickly. Let me pray with you. Just come. Just come. This is a very serious business for God and for you. Just come. Just come. Just come. Just come. Just come. Just come. God bless you. Keep coming. God bless you. Come. Come. Come, 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 come. Come quickly, come quickly. Come. God bless you. Keep coming, keep coming. And as you stand before God's altar, just go ahead and begin to ask him for his mercy. Pastors, let us pray for our brethren that are coming out. Please come, come, come. Talk to the Lord. Father, help me, help me. Help me, Lord. I'm tired of these habits. Take them away from my life. Give me the grace to overcome them. Talk to the Lord. If you are coming, please come, please come. Come quickly. Ask the Lord for mercy. Oh, talk to him, talk to him. Talk to him. I give you one minute to pray from the depth of your heart. Father, I am sorry. But I ask for your mercy tonight. Let your mercy speak for me. Let the blood of Jesus wash me clean. Give me the grace to overcome these habits. And from now on, nothing will hinder my new dawn. That young boy at the back, are you praying? Talk to the Lord. Thank you. Blessed be your name, O oh God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Father in heaven. I thank you for the lives of all of these your children that are standing before your altar even this hour. Thank you for the grace that you have given to them to make up with you at this very important time of their lives. I pray that your mercy will speak on their behalf. 
have mercy on every one of them. Cleanse them with your blood. Write their names in the book of life. Every grace they need to overcome all of these habits that will hinder their new dawn. Father, release to them afresh in the name of Jesus. And because they have decided for you today, Father, from now on, when they call on you, answer them by fire. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Um, we want to pray now. I would rather leave you here so we take our prayers together. Um, all right? Or you want to quickly counsel them? Let's pray here. Everyone stand up, wherever you are, stand on your feet. How many of us are ready to fight for our new dawn? I can't hear you. Thank you, Lord. I taught you that song. You will sing it one more time. My day don't break, oh. Better don't they come. Who won't try stop me. God go kill them. Amen. Can we sing that song? The first one. Who won't try stop me. God go stop them. He go fail. Amen. Because you must get into your new dawn. The first prayer you will pray this evening is a prayer of thanksgiving. Just go ahead and appreciate the Lord for this season of a new dawn. Father, I thank you. Because at last my new dawn has come. Lord, we bless your holy name. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Now you lift up your voice and say, Father. Every old chapter of my life that is haunting my new dawn. In the name of Jesus, I command them closed by fire. Go ahead and begin to pray. Every old chapter of my life that is haunting my new dawn. In the name of Jesus, I command them closed by fire. Is someone praying tonight? Old chapter of failure. Old chapter of shame, of reproach. That is haunting my new dawn. I command them closed. In the name of Jesus. You are not praying. You have 20 seconds more to pray. Every old chapter of my life, of my family that is haunting my new dawn. In the name of Jesus, I command them closed by fire. 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 Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. You lift up your voice and say, Father. Father. Say, Father. Father. Every enemy hindering my new dawn. In the name of Jesus, I break your powers today. Go ahead and begin to pray. I break your powers today. 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 I break your powers today.
Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Now take this one very, very seriously. You lift up your voice and say, Father. Every negative satanic pattern in my life and in my family saying no to my new dawn in the name of Jesus catch fire now lift up your voice and begin to pray every negative satanic pattern in my life and in my family saying no to my new dawn catch fire, catch fire, catch fire in the name of Jesus Lift up your voice and pray. Every negative satanic pattern in my family saying no to my new dawn. I command in the name of Jesus, catch fire. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Now this prayer, you, are, you pray for your neighbor. You lift up your voice and say, in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. I pray for you, my brother. For you, my brother. From, tonight, From tonight, your day is breaking by fire. Amen. Go ahead and begin to pray. Your day breaks by fire. Your day breaks by fire. Your new dawn comes by fire. In the name of Jesus. You have 30 seconds more. I command in the name of Jesus, your new dawn comes by fire. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. We'll take the circumstance of that song. You are going to take it very fast. My day don't break, oh. better don't they come. Who won't try stop me? God go kill him, he go die. Are you ready? Who won't try stop me? God go kill him, he go die. My day no break, oh. Better not let go. Who won't try stop me? God go kill him, he go die. Of us and say, Father, whoever says I will not make it in life, that my children will not make it, that I will not prosper, if they fail to repent, they will pay with their lives. Go ahead and begin to pray. Anyone that says I will not experience a new dawn in my life, in my career. In my family. Let them pay with their lives.
Let them pay with their lives. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Wherever you are, stretch forth your hands towards the altar. This is day one of a new dawn. Lay a demand on this day. And ask the Lord for one thing you want him to settle before you get home. Please make sure you are praying. God does not waste any man's time. Lord. Any area of your life where you are trusting the Lord for a new dawn. Talk to him now. I'll begin to round up your prayers. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Please let your amen be loud and clear. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, amen. we thank you for tonight. We thank you for opening a new chapter in the lives and destinies of your children. Accept our thanks in the name of Jesus. Every old chapter of their lives. That the enemy is using to hunt their new dawn. By the power in the name of Jesus. I command all such chapters. Closed in the name of Jesus. Closed in the name of Jesus. Close in the name of Jesus. If any man be in Christ, all things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. I pray again over your lives. Every old chapter of your lives, by the blood of Jesus, they are closed forever. Every agent of darkness that is saying no to your new dawn. I command in the name of Jesus, their powers are broken today. Their powers are broken today. Their powers are broken today. In the name of Jesus. I pray over your life. Tonight, the midnight of tonight, my God will launch you into your new dawn in the name of Jesus. Every enemy of your life and destiny that is saying over their dead body, they will not be alive. To see you experience changes in your life. Tonight, I command, if they fail to leave you alone, within the next seven days, they go down in the name of Jesus. 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 
They go down in the name of Jesus. They go down in the name of Jesus. They go down in the name of Jesus. Your new dawn has come. The door is open for you. Wherever you go, experience a new dawn. In your marital life, a new dawn. In your career, a new dawn. In your home, a new dawn. In your business, a new dawn. In your work with God, a new dawn. In the name of Jesus. Nothing shall stop you anymore. The Lord will bring it to pass. On this first day, whatever you have asked of the Lord, and you are trusting him for to deliver to you, before we share the grace tonight, may they become testimonies in the name of Jesus. And anyone that will take time to manifest, before these three days is over, may the evidence be strong in your hands in the name of Jesus. And every blessing the Lord has given to you, he will surely preserve. You are going from victory to victory, from glory to glory. So it is in the name of God the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. You receive that shout amen three times. Amen. amen. Church, please let's stretch forth our hands to pray for our Father. Let's pray for.